Hi, I'm Pastor Bill. I know all of you are familiar with the story in Acts chapter 3 of the man who had been born blind and was a beggar laid daily at the beautiful gate of the temple going into the, uh, the temple of God and how Peter and John one day walked up to them and said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And immediately uh, Peter lifted him up and strength was filled, you know, entered into his ankles and he began to walk and leap and praise God and held on to Peter and John in the, in the, uh, in the temple of God at Solomon's porch. And there Peter gave his second great sermon of the New Testament era. And uh, in that he just really was used to, uh, and the message was able to spark 5,000 people that got saved. And these people knew about this miracle. They knew about this beggar, this man that had been born lame and had been criticized. Well, in these next couple sessions, I want to talk to you, number one, about this man's circumstances, number two, about this man's mental health, his attitude, his feelings, the emotions that he was going through, and then thirdly, I want to talk about the manifestations of the Holy Spirit that day. What was it that manifested, that got the attention of Peter and John, as well as the man that worked the miracle? You know, see, these people had walked by this man many times. And think about the circumstances. Let's just start with the circumstances of this man. Here is a man that was born a cripple, had never walked, had watched the little children leaping and playing and having a, a wonderful time as, as he was a young adolescent, but could never play with the children, could never do anything, could not work, could not have a job. All he had to do was day after day after day, he saw a mother and father probably shamed and in many ways an outcast of the community, being accused of well, having a, a son that's you know, crippled from his birth. That means you must have sinned, parents, mom and dad. And for 40 years, he's had to watch his mom and dad go through the crisis, the pain and suffering with him. And there, he by this time, his parents are probably retired. He's 40 years old. He's supposed to be the breadwinner, the one that's supposed to take care of his mother and father in the later years. And here he could not get a job, could not sustain a job, could not make any income. The only thing he could do was come to the temple, have somebody carry him at the temple, and there stay or, I'm sorry, sit and beg as people would come by for prayer, hoping that they might be just some kind of sen uh, sensitivity or some kind of sensi uh, sensitive to his particular needs. You can imagine what was going out of his mouth when he begged and said, please, please, can you help me? Can you help me? I have a mama, a papa at home. Uh, you know, if you'll help me today, maybe my, mo my mama needs a new pair of shoes or needs a new shirt or my dad's out of work and we need food on the table. It's not just me that you're helping for, but you're providing for my mom and dad who are, are elderly now. Can you imagine? He's suffering the shame. He's suffering the indignity. He's feeling the pain and the anguish of his parents. He's seen that for 40 days of 40 years of his life, day after day after day. The dire circumstances of being left out, being rejected, just being, you know, rich people walking by him and just looking at him and how many people would walk by to go to, to the house of prayer, to pray and talk to God, but they'd look down upon him and they'd look and they'd say, he's not worthy to be to receive any benefit or blessing. He doesn't deserve anything. He must have sinned or his parents must have sinned. Leave him in that state. Let him suffer as he is right now. I mean, some people would take that. that. Not only that, but think of the circumstances here of here three times a day, nine o'clock, noontime, and at three in the afternoon, people would come for an hour to pray. Peter and John were coming at that hour. They were probably leaving some house meeting that they had had where they were breaking bread and fellowshipping and teaching the word of God to Christians. And now they were coming into the temple for the purpose of praying, to worship God, to seek God's face. But this man never went into the house of God during the time of prayer. This was his time of opportunity. This was his only time where he would be able to have his needs being met. Think about that. Instead of praying, he had lost all hope. There was no God that would take care of him, and he probably was angry with God. We'll talk about that tomorrow. But think about his circumstances. Everybody else going in to prayer, and instead of him going in to pray and to worship, what was his circumstances? He was having to beg and, and plead with people to help him during his dire circumstances. The circumstances are so critical, I think, to understand what was going on before God did, did this marvelous miracle for him. So when you think about the people that are suffering, that are down and out, and have been for a long time down and out, and you wonder, why in the world doesn't God do anything? Well, part of the problem is not just the circumstances that people have, but their own attitude. Tomorrow we're going to talk about that. But we do know that God 
did show mercy to this man. And God used this man, healed this man, healed this man's world, healed this man's life, showed compassion on him. And we're going to get into it a little bit, but think about that kind of a crisis when you think about your trials. Go to the house of God and pray. Don't let the circumstances of your world dominate you and control you. Don't be distracted by those things as that lame man was for 40 years. Don't let the distractions be there. Get up and march in there and worship God and watch what difference it'll make in your life. You have a great day. God bless.